All right, so last episode I left you guys on a blue ball, a blue ball note tuned to A minor. But we back now. We got a way better episode this time for you. Today we're running the machine with the upgraded electronic cabinet, baby. Take a look at her. Nice and beautiful, nice and sexy. Guess what, guys? Another upgrade I didn't mention is I can control the motor wirelessly. Or, if I don't want to do it wirelessly, I do have a control panel here that, um, let me see if it'll even show up on camera. But look, I have a control panel. Boom. That's what's up. Right now, I got my recovery pump running, compressing the yoga ball. I did do a, a test run, make sure everything was safe. I also got the shredder running. Everything is on the same circuit, so we actually can control, I mean, not control, but rather capture all the energy consumption with this meter here. Everything. So that's amazing. I also got a good tank right here. We're going to be using this tank to compress all the gas into the plastic natural gas. That's right, we turn plastic into gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, natural gas, and carbon. So, anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and shred up some plastics. Alright, so after a lot of shredding, I hope that I got 10 pounds of plastic here. Just for reference, guys, 10 pounds of plastic is a lot. Like, a ton of different bags and stuff. It ain't no joke. Out to 8 pounds, or about 3.7 kg. So, we're so close to 10 pounds that I think we may as well just go ahead and get to that 10 pound. Let's see how close this gets us. 8.3. I'm telling you guys, until you see 10 pounds of shredded plastic yourself, you would never guess how much plastic it actually is. Eight point nine. Will we finally have enough? Let's see. I don't think so. Nine point three seven. There we go. Ten pounds. Uh, so we got ten pounds of shredded plastic. Or, let's see. 4.5 kg. Of course, we gotta mix the plastic with carbon in order for it to absorb microwaves. Let's do five pounds of carbon. Five pounds of carbon, how many kilos is that? 2.2 kilos of carbon mixed with 4.5 kilos of plastic. Five pounds of carbon, 10 pounds of plastic, let's go. Goodness gracious, that was an absolute ton of plastic, but the machine gobbled it up. I wonder how far it is in there. I had the blades in reverse in the beginning. Then when I added the second uh, bucket, I had them in forward. So it might be plastic all the way down here. We're not going to spin the blades for a good bit when we turn it on. But this is the biggest run we've ever done with this machine. Just for reference, my Mark IV machine. My Mark IV machine, which was three times smaller than this machine. The biggest run we ever did was 10 pounds. So, this is a big run and we should get some good results. So to get this machine ready to run, we gotta pull a vacuum. So in other words, we gotta close all the ports. Let's go ahead and close this one. Gotta love the wireless remotes, baby. Let's open up our vacuum ports. These are gonna be wireless soon too. Vacuum. Vacuum being put on the machine. This right here is a manometer. This is going to call Diddy to my location in approximately 2.5 minutes to touch all the men. Actually, this is a manometer and this lets me, uh, me know the actual number of the vacuum. So right now, we just started, we're at 4 inches of mercury. So we got to wait a little bit for this thing to get up to at least, I like to do about 25 inches of mercury. And I got a new, well, it's definitely not new, but it's new for me, tank to put the natural gas into. This is bigger than the, pure, the propane tanks. We can go up to 300 PSI, and this is a bigger volume, so that will be a lot of natural gas to put into this thing. 
But I checked it. It's good. It's safe. Not about to bust on us. Well, at least I hope. I guess the true test will be when we plumb this thing right in. But we're no longer going to put the recovery pump or the natural gas into bladders anymore. No more yoga balls. No more rectangular nature jab balls. It's very dangerous because if they puncture, you have the flammable gases everywhere. And on top of that, why do that? Because the recovery pump has to run anyway. We have to consume that electricity. We might as well just plumb it right into a high pressure tank because we get to do that eventually anyway. Why compress after we can compress while we're running? Another thing to note is that pretty much every other test run we've done with this machine up to this point has been small. We have not been anywhere even near to 10 pounds. We've been probably at most five pounds, and that's at most. I, th I personally say three at the biggest test run we've done. Just plastic. Maybe carbon added might have been five, but this is the biggest run we've seen on this machine yet. We got six magnetrons, thousand watts going in. Power consumption meter gonna be checked. So we're gonna run this machine for about three hours, okay? We're gonna see how much power we consume, we're going to measure how many liquids we get out, and eventually we'll see how much carbon we get out, right? All right, we just hit 25 inches of mercury. Let's go. All right, so right now we're at full power. It's all six magnetron power supplies are on. Everything except for the recovery pump is on. The machine is currently pulling 41 amps. All right, we just dropped below 20 HGs of mercury, 20 inches of mercury, and you see it's dropping quick. So time to turn the recovery pump on. Now we're going to go ahead and plumb this, this output into our tank here. With every single thing you're running, we are pulling 48 amps of 240 electricity. We're pulling 11,200 watts. So we're 24 minutes in, and I see something interesting that I've not seen before. We are just 24 minutes in. We're not even at 100 C for the body temperature. Now the condenser is real cold, and the vapor temperature is really cold too. 73 C vapor temperature. Convert this to Fahrenheit. 165 Fahrenheit for the vapors, and we are already getting some slight liquids coming over. Mind you, on a normal run that we've done before, we don't start seeing this until we hit at least 80 C, but usually 100 C. Now that liquid could just be water, could be the actual oils, but still the point is, we're getting stuff earlier than usual with the big batch of plastic. And why? Because the microwave energy is used so much more effectively when there's such a large mass inside the machine. The vacuum has dropped down to 11 inches of mercury because the recovery pump is not strong enough to maintain the vacuum with how many vapors are being produced. Eventually, I need to get a 220 recovery pump anyway. It'll help the amperage of the whole system. But yeah, drop down quite a bit. 32 minutes in, not only do we have water, which is liquids in general, which is great, we have oils. Look at the skim layer at the top. Just 30 minutes in, not even 100 C. So it seems like more plastics improves a lot of stuff. The condenser temperature is actually rising pretty quickly because um, it was just at 5C, now it's at 9C. So we sure are putting the good old recirculating chiller to work. But look, take a look at those pipes that are coming off of it. Look at the condensation. So I guess I should insulate those pipes if I want the maximum efficiency for my cooling. Oh no, my sticker. Get this crap back on there. 42 minutes in, this tank is at 20 PSI, I gotta get a new gauge, it's foggy. 80 C body temperature, so still pretty cool. Vapor temperature is at 104 C, so vapor temperature at the elbow is getting hot. That's um, 221 Fahrenheit. And then the condenser temperature is now 16 C. So this condenser is heating up a little bit too much, more than I like actually. So the chiller needs to work better. Um, and also, the liquid is full, the liquid trap. At least the glass section. Now there's this pipe section. I need to empty it out and pour it into my separatory funnel. So that way we can actually track how much oil we get and separate it from the water. Gotta close this valve so we don't break the vacuum. 
temperature here, it just says hot. I don't know what the max range of this thing is, but we don't know now. Condenser temperature is rising. It's still 16C, still cold, but yeah. Body temperature, I think the probe isn't on there right, because there's no way the body's only 80C. All right, sometimes the probe gets messed up. Um, so I just dumped the last bit of oil and then it's already starting to fill up. So the oil production is looking good. Natural gas production is looking good too. This thing right now is at about 25 PSI. The vacuum also went back up slightly. Now it's at 12.8. Let's spin these blades for the first time. So pay attention to this monitor here. The blades or the motor pulls less than an amp because it's operating on 220 and it's not the full power of the motor, only 23%. So we're still only pulling 48.8 amps. Okay, about an hour and 15 minutes in, we got 250 mil of oil. Now this used to be how much we get from several runs. A single run, just an hour in, 250 mil, a quarter of a liter. The tank is about 45 PSI. So after about 2 hours and 30 minutes, we have gotten many, many beakerfuls, 250 mil beakerfuls of this oil. Changed colors again. It changes color. Another 250 mil right here. 250 mil more. And that puts us now at a total of 1.5, 1, 1 I believe that's 1.5 liters. So in the middle of the run, this tank leaked, unfortunately. Now it wasn't the tank itself, it was the valve. The valve you use to discharge the water from the air compressors. It started leaking when the tank hit 100 PSI. So I had to empty out this tank into this bladder. And then I had this bladder hooked up to the machine. And then I also had a yoga ball. But both of these, as you can tell, are completely full. All my balls are completely filled and sucked, sucked up. So unfortunately, I had to run, stop the run because there's nowhere else to put my vapors. And yeah, that's going to be an issue. So I had to cut the run short. We were at 2 hours and 40 minutes. So a good run. We got over 1.7 liters of oil. So almost 2 liters of oil from a single run. I guess the real thing will be to see how the carbon looks, but that's going to be next episode, to see how well we broke down the plastic, how much longer he had to run. We consumed 30 kilowatt hours in this run. So, good run. Biggest run yet. I guess we're going to see how the carbon is going to turn out. The machine is very hot. A lot of stuff going on. But you saw the oil. We got over half a liter of oil total, or half a gallon of oil total, as you see here. So it's time to distill, baby. It's time to distill and get the gasoline fractions out, diesel fractions out, jet fuel fractions out. Anyways, that's the machine running at full power. The big run, big load of plastic in its mouth. All the new functionalities. The machine worked brilliantly, stayed safe. The water chiller did an amazing job the whole time. Love to see it. So. Thank you all very much for making this possible with all your donations and support to get the project to this point. I'll see you next episode when we take a look at this carbon product.